So Amy, how are you doing? Um, I'm good, thank you. How are you? Good, thank you, thank you. So are you learning about uh, integrals? How do you find that? Indefinite integrals. Um, yeah, it's uh, very interesting. Um, not finding it too hard so far uh, because of the like knowing all the differentiation stuff. So yeah, yeah, I'm just doing questions from my book and things. Perfect. So are you going <coughs> to do questions from your book at present? Yeah. Any difficulties? Well, so far, uh, not yet. You covered the difficulties that I had um, in the last session. Last so, that's yeah. true. That's true. Yeah. So today I thought we'll take some examples of uh, indefinite integrals. Now, just picking examples at random, uh, I thought it's better to pick those which you may need in future. So you also need to do mechanics and uh, kinematics. So I'm going to take uh, indefinite integral examples based on displacement velocity and acceleration. So this lecture will be very important from even understanding how to uh, find the solution for indefinite integrals. And later on, when we are working for the mechanics thing, you will find it very helpful, right? So I'll give you a brief introduction to kinematics and take a few examples. Uh, that will actually prepare you very well for your own uh, test on GCSE level A. Now, what I notice is that in part A of your GCSE, Power function is the main function, I mean year one, but in year two, you will be introduced to many other functions. So we'll focus only on the power functions in this particular video, and later when we do part uh, two or year two, we'll take up other functions. Is that clear? Right? Yeah. So as usual, after this uh, lesson, you should go through all the questions in your textbook, and in case there is any difficulty, share with me and then we'll move on okay let me okay. share with you the lecture which i have prepared uh, i think that's the one <clears throat> yes there we go so we'll talk about integration applications i've given the title as kinematics right but truly speaking we're just touching the base here and i'm giving you a broad overview of this particular topic we'll actually extensively get into uh, kinematics examples later okay okay now you have understood what is anti-derivatives we are taking applications based on that uh, and we'll consider object along a straight line so whenever we have a function we'll assume that this function relates movement of an object along a straight line sometimes we'll also fix a point so if it is on the right side of this particular point we'll consider that displacement to be positive. And if it is on the left side, that displacement will be negative. So treat it as a y-axis. Is that clear to you? And when the object is moving right. away from the origin or the starting point, it is moving in both the directions away, right? When it approaches, that means coming closer and closer to y-axis, that is the term which will mean it is approaching, correct? So these are some important uh, terms which you should consider. And here are a few definitions to look into. Uh, the very first one, we'll say, always in our equation, we'll say, uh, let, let's say, we'll use s of t for displacement. So our function y equals to s of t be the position of an object moving along a straight line, right? Relative to a fixed point, O. So by default, we'll consider origin to be the fixed point. But that fixed point could be different also, okay? Mm. Now, if y is your displacement function, then instantaneous velocity is rate of change of position, right? So, you know, it's derivative of displacement. So, v of t is the derivative of displacement. Similarly, the instantaneous acceleration is rate of change of velocity. So, we can write a of t is equals to v prime of t, correct? That's absolutely mm -hmm. true. And what you see right there is a differential equation. You have a differential here, right? And the function on the other side. So it is a differential equation. How are you going to solve this differential equation? Can you tell me that? Um, using integration? 
using integration. And that is, we'll follow very simple step antiderivatives. You also now know the formulas. So you could use the power rule. We are only getting into examples with power rule to integrate and get the result. So integration will provide us the solution. So once again, we have a differential equation where we are saying, I have just written it in other form, correct? So I'm saying ds dt is equals to vt. If I have to find the displacement function from here, I have to integrate both sides, correct? So when I integrate, I get the displacement function as integral of velocity with respect to time, correct? So here, along the x-axis, the independent variable is time for us. Similarly, the other equation, which is rate of change of velocity is actually acceleration. If we do the integration, we can find what the velocity is. Velocity is integral of a of t with respect to time. Yeah. So right. that's yeah. equation. And uh, here's a very familiar graph for us. We'll get into this graph probably later. Okay. Let's take example one. Now, example one here is instantaneous velocity of an object moving along a horizontal line relative to fx point O is v of t equals to 60 minus 2, where t is greater than or equal to 0, right? So t is, we always take t mm -hmm. as What is the displacement from t equals to 2 to t equals to 5? Now we want, normally you'll find that when we do this indefinite integral, you get a function, correct? It is always a function as a result. But now we are given that two limits are given to us from 2 to 5. So we'll evaluate the function at 2. We'll also evaluate the function at 5. And the difference will tell us the displacement between these two, correct? So we'll get right. a particular case, right? So mm -hmm. that is the concept. And this concept is very helpful since the next unit is definite integral. This is kind of definite integrals where we are giving you the position and the final position, right? Right? Is that clear? Oh. Okay. So let's start. Okay. So we have the velocity function given to us. We need displacement. We'll integrate uh, the velocity function as such, which is 60 minus 2 dt. We can apply the properties here and the rules learned, which is if t to the power of n is there, that power gets added by 1 and the same exponent comes in the denominator, right? So here the power for t was 1, so we get t squared divided by 2. The constant is a multiplier, so we multiply this by 6. Here's the term 2, which is a constant. We get t. It should have been t, not x. Okay, so this is t, okay, not x. So, hmm, t, okay, uh, we are differentiating with respect to t, plus a constant, right? So as soon as you <coughs> do that, the result is a function. So s of t is simplified it, and we found this s of t as 3t squared minus 2t plus t, correct? It is a function, correct? It is not a value. So remember, Indefinite integral always results into a function. Very important. Now we are given a condition, which is what is the displacement from t equals to 2 to t equals to 5. So we'll find the displacement at t equals to 2, displacement at t equals to 5. That is basically substitute the value of t to 2 and 5 respectively, and you get your result in terms of c. But since we want displacement, what is displacement? Change in position. Displacement is change in position. And these are two positions. So we'll do S5 minus S2, right? Final minus initial. That is your displacement. So final time was greater time, which is 5. Initial is 2. So we'll do S of 5 minus 2. And substituting these two, right there, we have these two. Functions for s of 5 and s of 2, c and c cancel, and we are left with a value, which is 57. And in this case, well, the unit should have been centimeters. I wrote centimeters here, so that's another typing error. It should be centimeters. Is that clear to you? Yeah. The change yeah. of placement is 57 centimeters in this particular case. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. 
Now, you will note in this particular case that we solve the question without finding the value of C, right? As the related mm. was being measured. You see that? Related. So whenever we are doing related, <clears throat> some constants get cancelled away. You get the idea, right? So we are doing right, yeah. the C and T <clears throat> got cancelled from these points. And therefore, we could actually find the indefinite integral as a value without even calculating C. Well, this is kind of a very important example to understand the whole process as we move forward. So is this clear to you, Amy? Or any doubts? Yeah. Perfectly clear. Okay. No, that makes sense. Yeah. Very good. Okay. So let's take up the next example, which is example number two. And here, I would like you to take the lead. So why don't you read the question and help me understand how did I solve it? Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Example. So the instantaneous acceleration of an object, sorry, yeah, example two, um, the instantaneous acceleration of an object moving along a horizontal straight line relative to a fixed point O is AT equals minus 10 centimeter per second squared, where T is greater than or equal to zero. What is the change in velocity from T equals two seconds to T equals Five seconds. Okay. How will you solve it? Mm. What is so it? we've yes. got a of t as um, minus ten. Mm -hmm. So can we find the integral of it? Yes. Because so, you get the velocity backward. You have to move. Correct. Find the integral. Yeah. Oh yeah, because acceleration is rate of change of velocity. Correct. Right. Right. Yeah, so um, then we will do dt equals integral at times dt. Um, so dt equals minus 10t um, plus c. Yeah. So then you, do and you find your answer. That is correct. And then we have to answer um, the question what is the change in velocity when t is 2 and t is Five is your initial condition. Mm -hmm. Five is your final condition. You substitute these two values. You get your expression in terms of c. But when you take away the c, gets cancelled. Do you see that? And then you find the value. Right. In this case is negative thirty. Right. So negative thirty means that it is going in the left direction towards the. I mean leftwards. Right. Not right. So change in velocity is minus 30 centimeters per second, correct? Can I just ask a quick thing? Yes. Um, when you said last time with the negative, um, so for because it's negative 30, would you say then it's approaching the origin or like the, the O or no? Uh, see, it all depends on when approaching and, okay, so it's a complicated term. We'll have a question based on approaching and going away. Since, see, think like this. If the object is on the right side, right, and negative means the velocity is coming in this direction, it is approaching. Do you see that? It is approaching, correct? All right, yeah. But yeah. if the object is on the other side and negative velocity means going away, it is not approaching. It is oh. going away. Do you see that? So straight answer is not there. But you can definitely say oh. that we are considering towards east is positive, so it is moving towards west. But we cannot say whether it is approaching or not approaching. Is that clear? We can say it is approaching. Yeah. If the distance is also, I mean, displacement is decreasing, then we can say. Do you see that? All right. Yeah. If the displacement oh, so you can't make that judgment from just one one part. So we have to use the combination of displacement and velocity to answer your question. Is that clear to you? But negative Makes velocity. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah. Negative velocity means when we talk about vertical movement, that means it is going downwards. And when we say east to west, it is going west. So along the x-axis, it's going towards minus x. That is what it means, right? But it could be on either side of y-axis. If it's already on the negative side, the distance is, is going away. Do you see that? Farther away. 
what if it is on yeah, the right true. it is approaching so that is a very interesting question and unfortunately i have taken that approaching concept it's a very important concept okay good question example 3 it is very similar to previous example example 3 for us is the instantaneous velocity of an object moving along a horizontal straight line relative to a fixed point o is v of t equals to square root of t centimeters per second where t is greater than or equal to 0 its initial position is 3 cm in this case we are given its initial position it starts from here not from origin you see that 3 cm away uh So at t equals to zero, it starts at three centimeters away. So its initial position is three centimeters to the oh left of origin. So it's minus three other <laughs> to the left of origin. That means it is negative three. Oh right. To the left of origin. Okay, so it's very important to read it very clearly. Its initial position is three centimeters to the left of origin. So it's negative three. Okay. What is its position after nine seconds? That's the question for you. So similar to mm. the twist, right? We have given you the initial condition in this particular case. So we have the function velocity function is given to us. We'll find the displacement by finding the integral of the velocity function, and it is a good idea to write t to the power of half as you will normally do, right? At one mm. to it and divide by the same exponent plus c and simplify your results and then rewrite. in a form which is kind of 2 over 3 t to the power of 3 over 2 plus t now since we are given the initial position we can find the value of c correct so we'll substitute right. c equals to 0 the value is minus 3 because it is 3 cm to the left of origin is that clear negative is that part yeah. that gives you the value of c as negative 3 right so now we have our displacement function as s of t equals to 2 over 3 t to the power of 3 over 2 minus 3 correct so that is how we are going to find it mm-hmm. no the question here is what is the position after 9 seconds right so i have to substitute 9 there this should have been 9 i don't know why i wrote 4 there so s of 9 substitute 9 for t so when you substitute 9 for t You get two over three times nine to the power of three over two minus three, and when you evaluate, you get the answer. Which is correct. So the answer again is right. yeah. eight centimeters. Oh. <coughs> is that clear to you? Mm-hmm. So position so, after nine seconds is fifteen centimeters. Yeah. yeah. So in this particular case, because the initial condition was given, we found the value of c, and exactly we knew what is the displacement function. Once you know the displacement, mm-hmm. function, you can substitute the value of t and find the displacement at any time. Correct? All right. Yeah. Very. So now let's uh, move on and take another example. So. In this example, which is very similar to previous one, I again I just numbered it as example three itself. Okay. Now we have two particles. See, the question is kind of interesting. We say two particles moving in a straight, same straight line related to a fixed position O have instantaneous velocity given to us as v one t as sixty minus eight. And v two t as four t. So there are two objects now on the same track. Think like this: one is moving with the function given sixty minus eight. The other one is with the function four t at time t seconds. Their velocities are measured in meters per second. If they are both initially located at t equals to zero, that means we know. At t equals to zero, they are located at one point, kind of. That is that is what we mean. Determine their velocities when their positions are same. So now we want to find when will they be at the same position next time. That is the kind of question. Do you understand these um. words? So they are slightly confusing. It says 
if they are both initially located at p equals to zero, means they are located at the same point at p equals to zero, determine mm -hmm. their velocities when their positions are same next time. You understand? That is the kind of uh, wordings this question has. So basically, this time you have two velocity functions. We need to find displacement. So for both these independently, you do the integrals, right? As shown mm -hmm. here. And then you get your displacement functions as we got last time for previous case. The only difference here is we have two objects, two different functions. And so we get 3t squared minus 8t plus c for the first object and 2t squared plus c for the second object. Now what we want is the same position, right? Same position means S1t and S2t should be same. We need to find when will it be same, right? That is the whole idea, correct? So you tweet S1 T S2 T equating these two equations, C's get cancelled. You get a quadratic equation, which when solved gives you T equals to zero as expected and T equals to eight. So you get two positions. Right, so yeah. Starting position when they started at the same place. Second time when they come across each other is when T is equals to eight. Now that is what we wanted, right? So we want to find the velocity when t was 8. Now, there are two different objects, correct? So, you have to find their individual velocity. At 0, we know different velocities. And at 8, also, we know their velocities, correct? So, substitute t equals to 0. Initially, their velocities were minus 8 and 0 meters per second. At time t equals to 8, when you substitute at the same uh, velocity expression, Actually given to you, you'll find them to be 40 and 32 meters per second. I quickly went through this solution. Did you understand, Amy? Yeah, makes sense, a lot of sense, yeah. Okay, so can you describe me the solution of this particular question? Sorry, I think the connection just went. Could no you idea. repeat the question? Okay, so can you please describe me how are, in your words, how do you understand this particular solution? All right, so um, so they've given us the two instantaneous velocities. Um, so I would just write them down. And because it says they're both initially located at t equals to zero, it means that they're at the same um, position. Yes. So you have to determine their velocities when their positions are the same. Mm -hmm. So we would individually find integral for both of those velocities. Yes. And when you get those two positions, because they're saying um, when the positions are the same, we have to make those two equations equal to each other. Yes. And then when you do that, the C's cancel and you get um, 3T squared minus 2T squared, then you bring them the mi no the minus 8t is there is the two you bring to the other side and then you get t squared minus 8t we factor it out and you get t is zero and t is eight um and then you would sub those two values into each of those um instantaneous velocities so v1 and v2 got it and you That's get four answers got it. so why did we take these c's common it is because of this statement do you understand? So both constants we have taken as same, and that's why they got cancelled, right? Otherwise, they won't get cancelled. Mm -hmm. So that is the reason. Now let's take the next example, which is example number four now for us. It says, an object moves in a straight line with its position measured relative to a fixed point O. So we have taken all the examples where it is moving along a fixed, along a straight line, and we have a fixed point O. Its acceleration at any point at any time t is a of t equals to 60 meters per second square where t is greater than or equal to zero the initial velocity of the object is minus 25 meters per second see we have given initial velocity okay not acceleration or mm. and at t equals to one second its position is 24 meters left means negative 24 24 meters left of the reference point. Do you see that question? Now, it's very important. Yeah. Read the question carefully, especially in GCSE. 
these are the type of questions. Right? There are too many wordings and complex wordings. Right? It yeah. becomes difficult for many students to understand what's going on here, right? So are you getting this? The initial velocity of the object mm. minus 25 meters per second. We are given acceleration function, remember. And at t equals to 1 seconds, its position is 24 meters left, minus 24 that means. So we are given the function, which is acceleration. We are given initial conditions for velocity and position. Do you see that part? Very complicated. So right, yeah. Yeah, operations are simple. You know that you have a differential equation. You're going to integrate it and get the answer. But you know, the initial conditions may sometimes, you know, uh, get you on the yeah. wrong. Now, find expression for objects position and velocity. That's straightforward integration two times. Determine when the object is located left of the reference point. Is that clear to you? Left of the uh -huh. reference point. So we'll see what does it mean when we say object is on the left. Means displacement is negative. Do you get the idea? Displacement is negative, object is on the left. If displacement is positive, object is on the right. Is that clear to you? Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So that is the question. So again, we'll know the acceleration function. We'll do first integral to get the velocity. And in this case, the function is 6t. So the integral will be 6 times t squared over 2. And uh, OK, so from where did I get 8 here? OK. Now, this is not there. OK, so 6 times 2. So at t equals to zero, we are given the velocity, which is minus 25 meters per second, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, since it is minus 25 meters per second, we'll substitute that value for the velocity, right? And so we get the value of c as minus 25 for the velocity function. And so the velocity function becomes v of t equals to 3t squared minus 25, clear? Uh, wait, so by subbing in t as zero, you're getting velocity is minus 25. Yes. So in this particular equation, so I replaced vt, v of t as minus 25, right? Mm -hmm. And when t is zero, c is minus, c is vt, which is minus 25. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. got it. You include one more step here, please. So include that step oh, right. in between, right? Minus 25 equals to 6 times 0 plus C. Is that clear to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And C equals to minus 25, substitute that and get V. Perfect. So in the first step, we are going to calculate the velocity function, which is 3t squared minus 25. Now you need to find the displacement function. So you'll integrate the velocity function, which you just calculated which is mm -hmm. t squared minus 25. And when you integrate this, you get 3 times t cube over 3 minus 25t. And now apply the second condition given to you, which is that at t equals to 1, s is minus 24, right? Uh -huh. It is on the negative side. So at t equals to 1, substitute t for 1, and then substitute minus 24 for s of t. And then evaluate the value of c. It comes to 0. So in that case, s of t is t cubed minus 25t. Is that correct? Perfect, yeah. You get the idea? So we started with the velocity function, integrated, mm -hmm. found the value of c using the initial condition for velocity. And that was minus yeah. 25. Then we had the function, velocity function, integrated it and found displacement. To find the value of C, we utilized the second initial condition given to us about the position, which was minus 24. Substituting minus 24, we got C value 0. And we have finally both the expressions, one for velocity, the other one for displacement. Is that clear? So that is yeah. done for you. Now part B, which is determine when the object is located left of the reference. That means you should analyze what? 
velocity or displacement? Left of displacement. displacement. It is left when displacement is negative. Do you see how you're going to use? So, all right. Yeah. To do that, I factored it because we'll do interval table. You remember that? Left to right means oh, negative. Favorite. So we just uh, factored it. Now it is zero at point t equals to zero and t equals to plus pi. We are ignoring minus pi, right? Since t is negative <laughs> time. So only take zero and plus five. So that means we have to test in two regions. One is between zero to five, the other one between five to infinity. Take a test point and then you will see that if I substitute in this case a value which is less than five, in that case I get a negative result because in the bracket we get negative. Right? Uh, but if I put a value uh -huh. more than five, I get a positive value. That means between 0 to 5, the object was on the left side of That's the right. reference point. Do you understand the idea? So now right. we have yeah. that it is located on the left side in the first 5 seconds between 0 to 5. Does this make sense to you? Yeah. Very interesting. That's quite clear, yeah. Do you see how we graduated from very simple examples of just evaluating velocity and displacement mm -hmm. and then complicating it with some more initial conditions and now we also took example where we are talking about two objects right and their intersection yeah and here we have a very big decision to take which function to use to answer is on the left or right side correct well, that's true yeah. very actually i've selected questions for you so that you get the gist of whatever is there in your chapters okay and we are mm -hmm. kept in mind about kinematics chapter which you're going to do soon so some examples are giving you an exposure to what you are expecting there okay? now yeah yeah the next example is on speeding and now we'll refer to our graph which we initially had can you please read the question for me, please? Yes. So example five, um, graph for displacement, velocity, and acceleration is given. From the graph, determine the interval when approaching the reference point, moving away from the reference, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So basically, from the graph itself, so we do have internet connection problems. It is unstable, so that's why sometimes the voice yeah. is different, right? Okay, so we'll keep in mind about that. So from the graph itself, we have to find when is the object speeding, when is the object slowing down, when is it approaching the reference, that was your point, right? Approaching the reference, when is it moving away yeah. from the reference, correct? So what I actually did was that, you know, the same question where you asked me this particular question of approaching or not approaching, I've taken the same equations. Mm -hmm. So these equations are, I think, of our question uh, where we had, yeah. So these equations we have taken, one of these. Okay, so we have all the three equations here, mm -hmm. velocity function, uh, displacement and acceleration. So one of these examples, I have plotted the graph for one of these examples, okay? Now. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so clearly if you look into these functions, I've also written uh, acceleration as a straight line given to us, correct? Now, when we do the integral, we kind of get a parabola, which is the velocity function. And when we do the integral, uh, we do get the displacement function, which is kind of cubic. Do you see that? So these three functions are given to you. Let's look into the first case. When is the object speeding? Let's understand that. So the object is speeding. It could speed while going north or south. Do you see that? So the object speeds when the product of acceleration and velocity is positive. Do you understand? The object is speeding when the product, when you multiply acceleration and velocity, you get positive result, right? Then they are speeding, right? Speeding means if you're going north and then speeding means you're going further, further north, correct? At a faster speed, right? Mm. That is what speeding is. 
So when we say when the product of velocity and acceleration is positive, the object is speeding. Positive means from the graph, either both are negative or both are positive. Do you understand? They are speeding when acceleration and velocity graphs are both negative or are both positive. Is that clear? In our case, acceleration is always positive. Simple example, acceleration is always positive. So we will only analyze the velocity. Now the velocity function is positive after this point, which is at 3, correct? That is yeah. So that means after 3, the object is speeding. Before that, it was slowing down. Why does it say t is greater than 5 then? Uh, yeah, that's, that's a mistake. It should have been 3. A lot of time here is this time. Okay, yeah. And this should be 3. Yes. So, oh, yes, that's so confused. Yeah, that makes sense. When we are looking at the velocity graph, right? So, acceleration and velocity, we are looking at velocity and acceleration graph. Is that clear to you, right? So, good point. So, there are some typing errors here. So, it is after three. Now, the second point which you asked about, and definitely when is it slowing down? The other half. Is that clear? Between zero to three, mm -hmm. when they have opposite sign, one is positive, one is negative, it is slowing down. So you could remember yeah. like north, and if you apply brakes, velocity is going to be slowing down. Correct? It's kind of oh, like okay, yeah. The acceleration, right? Okay. Now the second part is moving away. The object is moving away when the product of displacement and velocity is positive. Correct. So look at velocity. Positive. So if I am on the right side of my reference point and moving away means velocity is also going away, right? That is moving away, positive. But if I am on the left side, means displacement is negative and moving away will be velocity yeah. also negative going left, both negative. Then you're also moving. negative times negative. Negative times it's positive. positive. That is the constant. Uh, is that clear to you? right so yeah so both are positive now we have to look for the positions as far as the velocity is concerned velocity is negative from zero to three so from zero to three both are negative do you see that from zero to three both velocity and displacement are negative correct so from zero to three, it is moving away because both have same sign they are on the left side right yeah and also you will notice that after five both are positive so they are moving away mm. got it yeah and in, mm -hmm. between, in between we have velocity is positive but displacement is negative so it is approaching it is coming closer to the reference frame point you understand the original point uh, yeah because it's negative because it is negative, correct? Uh, so, so the question where uh, you ask me whether the object is approaching or not approaching, the same question, I could add these questions. Tell me the point, uh, intervals when the object is speeding, when the object is slowing down, when the object is approaching, when the object is moving away, correct? So this is the concept which you can apply in kinematics. So I've given it separately only because this is so versatile that it can be applied in many questions. Okay. And most of your questions will involve one of these terms, at least, if not two. Okay. Uh oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So I've also included your example, which we did last time uh, on the height, because I thought we are considering the horizontal movement. Let's once again, a refer to a vertical movement of the object. And there also, we're talking about displacement, right? Which is in terms of the height of an object. And the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 most of the time when we consider. And the velocity function, as the object is dropped, you know, the velocity increases as it goes down, correct? So I thought we'll take this example once mm -hmm. right? So Amy, can you just read the question and explain the solution, please? Yes. So example six, 
The height in meters of a bullet fired horizontally from the top of a building is modeled by the function f of t, where f of zero equals 42. Given that f prime t is minus 9.8 t, um, find f of t. A. B. Find the height of the building. C. Determine the height of the bullet when t is 1.5 seconds. And D. Estimate the time it will take for the bullet to hit the ground. Okay. So the very first one, Amy, tell me how will you find the function? You are given the, the derivative. How will you find the function? So we would just find the integral of that. Right. So that would be minus 9.8 times t squared over 2. So it's just minus 4.9 t squared plus c. Correct. And to find the value of c, you use the initial conditions, right? So when you substitute right. the initial condition, you get 42 as the value of c. And now that also answers the second question, which is the height of the building. Because when you fire, t was 0. So at t equals to 0, mm -hmm. you get the value. And that value of the function is basically the height is 42 meters. So we have the function now, which is answer of part A. And we also have the height of the building, which is answer of part B. Correct? We have done this part. Mark. Part C is determine the height of the bullet when T is 1.5. Just substitute the value 1.5. Get your answer. That's simple. Estimate the time it will take the bullet to hit the ground. How will you do this part? D. Um, so, yeah, so this was the one I had the problem with, but um, now I think I understand it. So, uh, estimate the time it will take for the bullet to hit the ground. Mm -hmm. So, if it's hit the ground, that means the height is obviously zero. Is. So, all we need to do is make the equation that we just found, f of t, so make it zero. equal to zero. So, minus 4.9 t squared plus 42 equals zero. Yes. So then t squared equals 42 over 4.9, and then you just square root that to find t, and well, you've got 2.9 seconds. So you remember, right? That's why I just took it, just to make sure that you know this. is a very important question, right, from test point of view. Mm. So with that, we have understood how to evaluate, I should say, in our cases, we did evaluate indefinite integrals. But most of the time, you have seen indefinite integrals will always give you a function. Since we were given conditions, right. we could actually evaluate some values, correct? And with the help of understanding the concepts, we also get to know some other concepts about kinematics, which are going to help us now. So now it's time for you to summarize our learning. So what did you learn today, Amy? Um, so I just, we did a bit more on um, integration applications. Um, so how they can be applied, um, obviously, in word problems and things. So about reading the question, uh, it's very important because uh, like we saw in some of the questions, um, so if it says it's 24 meters, um, like the displacement is 24 meters, um, don't always assume that, okay, that's it. Like if you read it, Head, it would say whether it's to the left or to the right that would change your whole answer completely because it will make it either negative or positive okay. um, then you said um, indefinite integrals they always give you a function that's why we have that plus c so don't forget that um, also uh, dis oh yeah so with displacement um, when we were doing so if it's on the right it means it's positive and if it's on the left, it's negative, right? Yeah. And um, with the speeding and the moving away, uh, so that was concept was quite new to me. So what you said was um, when when we're looking at graphs. So with the speeding, if the product of the velocity and the acceleration is positive, that means it's speeding. Um, and if it's moving away, if the product of the displacement, displacement and, velocity and the velocity is positive, got it. then it's moving away. Got it. That so, yeah. So there's a combination terms of like two factors the, to give you speeding and slowing down or approaching or moving away. Right. So that's very good. 
So I think that should really help yes. you to solve many questions. And uh, the trick involved in these questions is definitely, as you pointed out, read carefully the initial conditions given and then what you need to really yeah. find out, correct? That will help. Now with that, I think, uh, you know, indefinite integrals, uh, we'll now uh, in the next chapter, look into definite integrals, perfect. Uh, oh, okay. We'll take that up in the next lecture. And I hope uh, with this will help you to solve most of your questions in the book. Wherever you have any difficulty, share them with me and also watch some of my videos on this particular topic to get more practice. Okay? All right. Thank you so much, sir. Thanks. My pleasure. Have a great day. You too, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye.